So what kind of meat do you eat? Um, all kinds. Most of them, but in very much moderation. Anything really, poultry, beef, that kind of stuff. What kind of pork product specifically? I grew up in the American Midwest, so bacon is kind of a, a staple. Sausages would be the main one. I'm from Spain, uh, jamon is a part of our culture. Pork steaks, that's that kind of thing. So, like to say you go in and buy some pork products, all right? You go in a supermarket, uh -huh. you see uh, just some bacon that just says British bacon. Then you see some other bacon that says free range bacon. Yeah. And it, it might have an RSPCA assured logo uh -huh. on it or something like this. Uh -huh. What would be the difference in your consumer choices there? Would you, like buying free range versus the other? Would you feel better about it? Would you feel more comfortable with it? Like, I would feel probably better about a free range uh, label than if I you know, had a, a pretty strong feeling that it came from a factory farm. If I'd made the choice to go out and buy bacon, then I would be quite detailed in the information that I was looking for that was on the pack. I wouldn't just go for pork blended from 69 different countries like you might do with wine. Um, I'd go for something that was red tractor or it was obviously free range, but I would also marry that up with how much more expensive it was as well. Why would you buy free range? because I just think the animals have a much better deal in life and it fits with my value system that animals shouldn't be intensively farmed. Either you stop eating meat or you start eating free range and things that have been properly brought, brought up. It sounds like they're educated, but have been, had a happy life. I would think that they were raised or grew up with uh, more freedom compared to other types of maybe of pigs um, where they were able to roam around, they exercised, they didn't just live confined in a small space, just grown for food. But the reality is obviously they're being farmed and then they're killed. So it's all well and good saying I'm going to have free range, but it's like, okay, well, you, you know, all well and good, you can go outside for 10 minutes, but then I'm going to kill you. So I think it's a bit of a moot point, really. <laughs> Go outside for 10 minutes and you're free range. <laughs> I mean, yeah, do you think it's okay to like kill a pig if they've had a bit of time outside? Right, exactly. So that's the point I'm making. Eating free range, people consider to be like a halfway house, but you're still eating meat, right? So it's never going to be great. Do you think you can trust labels? Some labels. Like, I wouldn't just trust a company that's saying, like, their eggs are free range or the pigs are free range. I'm like, does free range mean they can move three square feet a day or does free range mean, like, they're living a better life than me? Like, yeah, not particularly, I suppose. I would have to look into what qualifies as free range because, for example, I know if something is labeled as all natural, it's got a very different connotation than organic. Um, so I'm sure free range has a, a certain connotation in terms of, uh, what they're trying to market it as. On the one hand, yes, I do try to go for things that say free range or maybe like uh, better quality of life, organic, less treated. But on the other hand, I do marketing and I know a bit about how that works, about how using the right words to get people to feel better about the product can help. So I don't think it's truly as simple as you're trying to make it seem. Like I don't think a free range label literally means that a pig just grew up in a farm and played with other pigs before it was its time. I think there is a lot behind it that we are not quite being told. So what about uh, gas chambers? Have you heard of gas chambers in this context? Like in animal context? I know the concept. I'm not, I don't know specifically how it pertains to uh, the livestock industry or uh, pigs in general, but... No, not in this context. In the, yeah, I do know about gas chambers. In which context? Uh, mostly in the Second World War. Um, yeah, the concentration camps. So do you know they use gas chambers to, to stun pigs? Um, it wouldn't surprise me. No, I, no, I didn't know that that was what was used to kill them at all. Yeah, that would definitely bring up some pretty violent, I guess, uh, genetic memories. Um, I think my gut instinct would be like, yeah, it's pretty messed up. So you hadn't heard of them before? No, I've never heard of them, yeah. So that, would that tell you that they're not very common? I would assume that would make them not very common, yeah. What if I were to tell you that it's actually the most common method for, for stunning uh, pigs worldwide? I'd be pretty shocked, honestly. So in the US, yeah. in Europe? Here in the UK, it's uh, close to 90%. In the US, it's 85%. Wow. Yeah, no, I had no idea. I had absolutely no idea at all. Like, at all. So when you think of the gas, tell me, like, what comes to mind, like, knowing that, like, let's just say you've seen an RSPCA assured label. Yeah. Seen that. You've seen free range on, the, on, the, on this pork. Mm -hmm. um, and then you found out from me that they actually killed in gas chambers, and I told you nothing more. What would you think about 
the gas? What, what kind of gas, what kind of experience would that gas be? My first thought would be it's kind of like a, like a sleeping serum type of thing, just kind of like whenever you have to euthanize a pet, um, just make it so they don't suffer. I'd have to make some sort of assumption that the gas was sort of like a sedative maybe or something to like calm the pigs, get them out of their heads, like sedate them, calm them or put them to sleep. I guess it makes them woozy. A uh, dopey? I really don't know. I really don't know. Can I show you? Yeah, you can. It's going to be girl sleep. It's going to ruin my appetite, isn't it? Well, that's upsetting. Um... Wow, so it's kind of the opposite of a sedative. The gas reacts with their mucous membranes in their eyes, nose, mouth, creates something called carbonic acid, which causes them a burning sensation, suffering. It's fear-inducing, so they try to escape. OK, this is horrible. And these could be any free-range pigs or whatever. This is just a method of dispatching them. This is RSPCA assured? Yeah. It's not the image I had at all. It feels like they're really suffering, like almost like they're uh, drowning really slowly. You can see how they put their snoot out of the cage, almost like they're trying to get more air. I'm surprised. Like I would think having terrified pigs in their last moments would not produce the best quality meat. And like that's just like purely like consumerism, right? Like. If you want the best quality meat, like, why would you have animals that are absolutely terrified to the last second? Um, so I'm honestly, like, I'm surprised that that's what they do. I'm guessing it's just so much cheaper than everything else. And so... They probably, Cheap? Uh, efficient? Yeah. They probably all decided, like, we're just going to not talk about this. Like, we're, well, and, yeah. and, and who do you think put that footage up? Do you think it was the bacon industry? <laughs> no. <laughs> How do it's you not a McDonald's ad. It goes against what I would... Um, I would hope that the... Uh, slaughtering process uh, would be, but I know that basically it's a profit motive, it's an industry. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of gross. The fact that welfare charities and stuff are putting their labels on pigs killed in this way, what do you think of that? It doesn't seem right. I think as consumers, we should be able to trust labels. They sh there should be regulations behind them that we should be able to trust, but if that's the reality behind it, it doesn't seem like there's much truth behind the labels at all. If you buy bacon and you see an RSPCA Assured logo, you can almost guarantee that that's where they've been be. gassed. Yeah, OK. Then I will stop eating. <laughs> I've just, I had no idea about that, and it would strongly influence whether I choose to eat that bacon or not. I wouldn't. I just wouldn't. Unless there was proof that they hadn't used CO2 to kill them, which is highly unlikely. It's not on the labels. Yeah. I'm an easy convert on that, if you showed me that footage, uh, and because I just really didn't know. Wow. Wow. Oh, that was easy. Um, yes. <laughs> I'm not going to fight it. So, so, you, so you'd stop eating like, yeah, pork products in the UK? Yeah, yeah. The other, the other method is actually a electric stun and stab in the throat method. It's kind of ubiquitously agreed upon welfare groups that it's not as humane as CO2. Seeing that footage. It's the most humane method available, yeah, yeah. is what they say. Okay. And, I, and my argument is, why don't you just stop killing pigs? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Stop killing them. Yeah, yeah. Stop serving bacon to people. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not a necessity. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I'm quite close to stopping eating meat, so it, it isn't a big leap for me. Do you think the words humane and slaughter go together? I think so, yeah. Um, like I said, I grew up in the American Midwest, so there are a lot of uh, small, like, family farms. You know, I know these people personally. I know how they raise their animals, and I know how they slaughter them, and they are raised well. Do you agree that animals have a preference to live? Um, I think anything that's alive has a preference to live. Yeah, it's instinctual. Okay. So if they have a preference to live, is it humane to painlessly take their life from them? Can be, yeah. But what does the word humane mean? Um, causing the least amount of suffering as possible. What if I told you it actually means to show compassion and benevolence and kindness? Well, yeah. Would you think it is compassionate to slaughter for, for food? Um, it can't, it, it, again, it's all about context, um, but I, I think so, yeah. Slaughter is a really emotive word. I mean, it's not murdered, but it's, but it's close to murdered. It also suggests a mass, a mass killing off slaughter um, and defenceless, which I guess is all those, it is all those things. Do you think, um, there's such thing as uh, humane slaughter? That's a good question. Um, I think there could be. Um, again, if you're looking more at it in the context of maybe euthanizing an animal versus what I just saw, um, 
I think there would be, but I don't really know much about it. I don't even know how that would affect actually like what happens to the actual animal afterwards. So I want to think there are ways, and if there aren't, then there's at least enough interest in finding them. You said euthanasia. In what context usually do we use euthanasia for animals? Uh, when they're suffering. We need to stop their suffering. Okay, and is that, is that the same reason that they're gassing them for bacon? Not quite. I've thought about this quite a lot, and uh, the reason that humans have rights is because we, we have inherent value. Like we don't go, uh, you deserve rights, you don't deserve rights, uh, based on some arbitrary thing. We can't say, oh, well, you're less intelligent, you're from a different uh, country or you're from a different uh, gender or something like this and therefore you don't get the same rights. Human rights protects all of us. We are in the world, we're aware in the world. What happens to us matters to us. So we should be protected, by, even if you serve a purpose for me, I shouldn't yeah. be able to force you to serve a purpose for me. And in the same way, animals, they are conscious beings, they are sentient, they're in the world, they're aware of mm. they're in the world, you know. They might not be aware of where in the universe they are, but they, what happens to them definitely matters to them because yeah. you'd be against animal suffering. Sure. Yeah, so that, there's an individual in there that is experiencing the, the suffering. Suffering doesn't matter in, in and of itself. So therefore, like, animals should have a right to exist without human-inflicted, like, exploitation for some trivial human sure. yeah, purpose. Yeah. And, and I think that's um, a pretty easy yes to say from, from this perspective, right? Like, as somebody that has no power over that, like, I think that's obvious. Like, I think if I couldn't go out and get like a dish full of bacon at any point at any day like oh no like that's not really that big a deal it doesn't really negatively impact my life but it negatively impacts like a pig's life or rather doing that negatively impacts an animal's life so yeah i think that's that's an easy like yes like like inherently like in intrinsically inside of them do you think there's a an individual experiencing the world yeah i do yeah i do yeah they're intelligent thinking beings in my book. They're not just lumps of meat on four legs, definitely. Do you think suffering's the only important factor when it comes to like moral consideration? Like, like let me just put it for you this way, because if I was to be put into a, um, a, a gas chamber against my preference to live, and it was uh, some kind of humane gas that took my life from me, do you think that that, would you call that humane? Not if it's against your will. Not necessarily, I don't think a type of murder would be humane. Do animals have a preference to live? Yes, I think everything that is alive would choose to continue to live. So is it not uh, wrong to do that to animals if they have a preference to live their life? Yes, but as of right now, it's the only thing we've ever known. Do you think it's, um, it can be considered uh, compassionate to kill animals painlessly for food? Um, I think it depends on how you define compassion in. Um, if it's about bettering the animals. How do you, how do you define compassion? Um, like if you would be compassionate to say some of these people out here, what would that look like? I think there's two sides of it. You can be kind to these people. You can notice that they need help and you can provide it to them. You can speak to them without judgment and you can help them. But there's also the other side of it where maybe what they need is someone to treat them kindly. I don't really know where I'm going with this. Can I start again? No, that's okay, yeah. Would you make any changes based on this knowledge, new knowledge? Like, would you make any dietary changes? Like, Yeah, I mean, I think it's, like I said before, like, I think it'd be really easy to sort of mitigate consumption. I think, you know, until I figure out, like, what exactly is happening or what's happening to kind of make it better. Like, yeah, I think it'd be pretty easy to mitigate consumption until then. Cutting out supermarket meat, for sure, uh, is something that I want to make a point going forward. Um, I don't know if I would cut meat out of my diet uh, entirely, but finding uh, more what I would consider to be more ethical sources uh, would definitely be a higher priority. So you think you can make killing, mass killing animals for food better? Or do you think it should be end completely? Um, I think that, so I think that you can make it better. Um, I don't think it'll ever end completely, nor, I mean, purely selfishly would I ever want it to end completely just as somebody that does consume meat, but I think it can definitely be better. I think like being better is a really good step to, you know, lab grown meat, if stuff like that starts catching up and I think that it will, like then there's absolutely no point in killing a cow. If I can consume the way that we were before, that's a lot easier than trying to create these larger changes. So what about like plant-based food, burgers and stuff? Yeah, so I think um, it's made a ton of headway. 
it's not at the point where uh it's worth not killing animals for yeah well let me put it like that but it's not it's not at the point where where it's as good and i think once you start asking individuals to sort of sacrifice that that's where people and again people obviously like me anybody else you'd interview like that's where we'd honestly go like so th so you're talking about like taste over the rights of these animals to an extent yeah I think uh, following a plant-based diet is definitely something, it's a worthy cause. I think there's more research for us to do. I'd like lots of people to go vegetarian, I mean, enough of the world to go vegetarian to make a really big difference. And that would include pigs.